And here we are, folks. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Hardly Millennial Podcast, where we are young, dumb, and full of... Opinions. Opinions, ladies and gentlemen. All just opinions. Might be some facts in there, but mainly just opinions. <laughs> um, still, we have this, uh, our, uh, your same two favorite hosts with you. I'm Adam Hansen. And I am Matthew Lynn. How and you guys doing? And uh, we're going to get started here for you guys. Oh, I want to remember, I meant to mention this the first time. So remember, you guys, if you don't have access to YouTube or if YouTube doesn't run well when you're trying to listen to audio or whatever it is, we also have this podcast up on SoundCloud yes, for indeed. you to listen to. So you can just search Hardly Millennial on SoundCloud and you'll see our stuff, look for our logo, and you'll see all of our podcasts up there. And it'll it'll be a good time. We also have a GoFundMe also, GoFundMe.com slash Hardly Millennial. So you can go check that out. Throw some money in the jar for us. Um, any donation is greatly appreciated. We appreciate all you guys. But enough of that. That's the boring stuff. That's the boring stuff. Let's have stuff. some fun. Let's have some fun. We, we actually keep up with some really interesting topics to talk with you guys about today. I do just want to throw out a little disclaimer right in the beginning here. Hmm. Um, I am on one today. Oh, okay. I am absolutely on one. So, guys, this lack of coffee in the morning, it's only day two of this, and it's getting to me. It's starting to really affect my psyche. Yeah, Um, it's just... There used to be... It wasn't just getting the coffee, guys. There was a ritual. You you went to the local coffee shop. That's where you spent the first, like, hour or so of your morning. You drink your coffee. You talk to the local coffee goers that you see every day. And now we're going to, you know, the gas station down the street. Every now we're morning. lost. Yeah, we're lost. We're lo- we don't know what to do with our lives, guys. Uh, um, I think, yeah, I think uh, I'm just going to have to get a friend. I know you have your Keurig, but I really you know just what? want a French press. I'm sick of you in the Keurig. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to let you just hate the Keurig and that's okay. Good. I'm glad, I'm glad you have just accepted that. I, I'm done trying to convince you. <laughs> but yeah, guys, the, the lack of ritual in it's the getting morning to us. Is, yeah, it's but we'll, we'll get back, guys. We're gonna get back there, I promise. But <laughs> the old days are gone, Adam. It's not gonna go back to that. I know they'll 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 recircle in some way, shape, or form. So anyway, I really needed it this morning because I did. Uh, I went and did karaoke last night. Oh, did is that what you were doing last night? I went. And did Adam karaoke. was out all night, guys. It's I didn't true. know what to think. I love karaoke, guys, and I haven't done karaoke for a while, so it was actually pretty fun. But it's funny though because it was a Monday night. Today's Tuesday, right? Yeah, so it was a it's, Monday yes. night. So I, it just made me laugh that this bar, we have like this local district in Arizona called Mill Avenue that's like college towns where ASU is and all the bars and everything. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that place. Yeah, yeah. and we, went, we uh, <laughs> went to this bar there, this like pizza bar. And it's a Monday night, so nobody's there. Yeah, you're partying on the wrong day of the week. So, bro. yeah, so was, I'm used to going... <laughs> to karaoke bars and like the karaoke the karaoke maestro you'll put down like your name and then the song you want to do and then he basically puts you in the lineup and then he'll right. call you when it's your turn <laughs> what was there a lineup no there was no lineup <laughs> it was just you went up there and you're like i want to sing this song and he's like all right and then he just handed you the bike and you're like oh i'm doing it now Okay. Uh, Let's go. (laughs) So, I mean, it was fun. There were people there who were obviously regulars on Mondays. In fact, I went with somebody who's a regular who just invited me. The Monday night crowd. The Monday night crowd, exactly. Were they like 65 plus? So you had some younger people in there. (laughs) The younger people cleared out pretty early, though. I'm I'm assuming there was work or school the next day. But you, you definitely got the kind of eccentric older people though (laughs) like there was this there was this one little old lady that was in there that she look she was the cutest old lady she had the cutest little smile on her and she was out there drinking like i I don't even think it was a beer i think she was drinking like a tea or something or at least that's what it looked like and she (laughs) sang a couple songs but she sang them horribly and she mumbled and everything (laughs) But the entire time, you're just like, oh, this sweet old... Like, you could tell she just wasn't there, but oh, you just I were happy to have her. Yeah, dude. Uh, did you talk to her? No, we didn't talk to her, but you you just saw her, and you just knew, like, oh, you probably do this every Monday. Oh, like, God. I love the really eccentric old people. Mm-hmm. Um, so the ones that, like, 
start to revert back to how we dressed when we were children. Oh, but yeah. But like little kids, like they have the real big gaudy jewels. Yeah. That are, they're not real crystals. They're like made out of plastic. Right. But they're all the different colors the of the rainbow. The beads. <laughs> they have the long dresseries that they wrap around their necks. And, they, oh, they're my favorite. Oh, yeah. Well, you always want to talk to them. Especially when old people, and I don't even think this is a millennial point of view. I think this is just an every generation point of view of old people usually being on the more asshole side. You know, because I mean, people get cynic. <laughs> it's true, though. I, they certainly, I think it's that they don't keep up with the times. They're well, considered to be like well, old yeah. school. So I think that's what I was going to say. So I think it's due to just them becoming <laughs> cynical and bitter. I think that happens yeah. a lot. Yeah, I can but, see it. So it's really nice when you see the ones, even if they're not old there, you're just like, uh, oh. They just live in Candyland. Yeah. Like, remember the old board game Candyland? And you Land? just want to let them. <laughs> you're like, you've lived, you've lived a life. I'm sure you have many stories to tell if you could recall them. <laughs> 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 like oh, just gosh. just do your thing they've seen rush like 13 times live oh. like, <laughs> but man but anyways but karaoke was a lot of fun though i haven't done it in a while what song did you sing bro so i always open with play that funky music of course i of course I, i'm great at that song i can sing <laughs> it well and it, i always because I always end up getting to karaoke when it's like just starting, right? right. So you're, it's like when you go to a dance and everybody's waiting for the first person to go out and dance. Yeah, no one wants to go first. So I'm always that first person and I always go out there and I do that song and every, it, it just gets people going. <laughs> and then from there I can you're just... You're a trendsetter. I'm a trendsetter. You know, someone has to do it. Somebody has to. It's just a good song to do too. You know, you're not opening with oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, know? <laughs> you you have been known to belt that one out too, though. I have done that one at you karaoke before, but I only did it at karaoke after I had like practiced two weeks leading up to karaoke. You wanted to do it justice. I wanted to do it justice. I've always <laughs> wanted to do it, but I didn't want to do it. Be shitty at doing on, it. On that note, for our more intellectual viewers, uh, what's your favorite rendition of Hallelujah? Who does it the best? I really like the Rufus w Wainwright version. Rufus Wainwright? Uh, Rain Wainwright? 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 Something I like, like that. the Jeff Buckley. Jeff Buckley? That's one of the... I, that was... So I think Rufus Wainwright only made it popular when it was in the Shrek movie. That's yeah. that's certainly where I first heard it. Isn't Jeff Buckley? Isn't that the one you hear on the radio? That's like the the one that everyone knows. No, no, no. Rufus Wainwright is oh, the that's one that everybody one. knows. Jeff Buckley's the younger guy. Yeah, look at He's... Jeff Buckley as the because I think Jeff Buckley's version is all on the guitar, whereas Rufus Wainwright's version is all is all on the piano. Maybe so, I don't know if you if you YouTube them, you can find both of them. Yeah, and I I really like the the Buckley version. But I just found out recently. Well, I think the Jeff Buckley version too has verses that aren't in the Rufus Wainwright version. Also, oh really? So I I think people look at the Jeff Buckley version as a more complete song. Oh, interesting. Of, like he tacked on a few more. Yeah. I now think then you so. say that, I feel like it does go on longer. Because there well there are times I I know when like Pandora or something. Uh, Hallelujah will get brought up, but sometimes it'll be the Jeff Buckley version. Yeah, and I'm somebody who I thought I knew all the words to Hallelujah, and then you all the think. and then all of a sudden there were these verses. You're like, what the hell? Yeah, I, I had no idea I where they he came starts from. with the same three though, the same good old the the verses that are song. the verses that are in Rufus Wainwright's one are in the Jeff Buckley one, but there right. are just I think like two added verses that aren't in there, I or I guess right. they're not added. Rufus Wainwright took them away. But it's a great song. It is great a great song. song. I don't think he's the original one who did it, though. I don't think Jeff Buckley is the original. No, no, I don't think song. so either. I think the song's been around for a while. I think that at one point I knew the guy's name. I can almost see his face, too. He's really I think old. at one point we had this conversation. We did. looked it up. Yeah. yeah. This is one of those conversations we just keep revisiting, like, once every four months or so. We have, <laughs> we have mid-20s Alzheimer's. <laughs> so we just tell the same stories every day. Oh, uh. Um, so on the topic of songs though, real quick, I have often heard that Stairway to Heaven by Led mm -hmm. Zeppelin is considered like the greatest song ever written. What do you think about that? Mm, I mean, I like the song. I'm not a like huge Led Zeppelin fan. So it's... Why? It's, I am. Everyone I, else is. I like, I mean, I like them, but I mean, I just... I never really downloaded any of their songs, or I had a couple of their songs. So I had like Cashmere and I had Stairway to Heaven and things well, like that. Well, first of all, but... you mispronounced their name. 
It's not Led Zeppelin. It's the almighty Led Zeppelin. Oh, excuse me. That's the correct me. pronunciation. Well, I have never been uh, the biggest fan of the almighty, <laughs> great <laughs> Led Zeppelin. But I do appreciate them. I, it's the same way It's the same way I feel about like Bob Marley and a lot of reggae artists. Oh. Like Sublime's up there also with them. Oh, I, I love Sublime. I'm not usually a big fan of that kind of music, but I definitely respect those who do that kind of music. And Led Zeppelin was the same way. I think Led Zeppelin, mm. I don't like Led Zeppelin. I'll say this. I'm not the biggest fan of Led Zeppelin's music, but I, I think... The who's the, who's the main guy of Led Zeppelin? The guy who wrote all the songs. Oh, you're gonna call me out like that, bro? Yeah, I don't remember his name. Oh, well, the Rolling he, Stones had Mick Jagger. Uh, what did what did Led Zeppelin have? Uh, oh, fuck! The internet's gonna kill us for this. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys! Well, regardless of his name, I think he's a fantastic lyricist. I think all of his songs read like poetry. I really appreciate that in songs, especially compared to what we have today in songs, where somebody repeats the same three words over and over again for three minutes. Oh, dude, it's so. This might just be me finally reaching the point where I'm getting old. It might actually be happening because mm -hmm. the music today. <sighs> I have such yeah. a hard time with it, Adam. It's it's not even that I hate it or I disrespect it. Like you just don't get it. It's noise. Yeah. You know when the old people, what we consider the old people, are like, oh, your music's just noise. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, I, we're reaching I get that it point. now. I don't agree, but I get it. But I, at the same time, though, I feel like oh, well, I guess this can apply to all the new generations too, because I was going. I was going to say, I feel like when we were younger, we still had a lot of respect and there was a lot of uh, fans of the older stuff and what our parents listened to and even, oh, yeah. even older than that. But I guess you can argue the same today because there are younger kids who well, are into like more of the mainstream bands from our generation. You we know, even but, called it classic rock. Like mm -hmm. our parents rock and roll, it got dubbed classic rock. Yeah. And everyone knows it. Mm -hmm. But like, do you think that's going to happen to millennial rock? Like yeah, what we grew up with. I think it'll just happen to just like with every generation, we're going to know all the bands. They're just going to know the big mainstream ones. So I think my chemical bands like My Chemical Romance or Linkin Park or Corn, Slipknot. That's going to be classic rock. I think I it won't be called classic rock. Oh but my god, Adam. it'll have its own genre. Yeah. No, I'm not ready for that. I know. It's I'm not mentally happen, ready though. for that. I saw so a My Chemical Romance song came on my <laughs> Pandora the other day, right? And you were like, hell yes. Oh, hell yes, exactly. I love my chemical romance. But what was funny is on Pandora, when the song is playing, it'll usually show you a picture of the album that that song is coming from, right? Right, right. And so it's my chemical romance, and I'm expecting it to show the like the Black Parade album, right? Because I yeah. knew that song was from that's the only that album, album. I ever have. And I'm just kidding. I was gonna say they had a few. <laughs> But do you want to know what it was? It was this other picture, and it was My Chemical Romance Greatest Hits, <gasps> 2003 to 2013. No. Yeah. So these bands are coming out with greatest hit albums greatest now, Matthew. Hits. <laughs> oh, That's no, how you Adam. know you're becoming old. Where <clears throat> that, excuse me. I, I'm speechless to that. Yeah. I never thought I would get there. I, I mean, here we are. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it came from a greatest hits album. My favorite band in all of history forever is um, System of a Down. Yeah, I love they're them. a great one. They were one of my favorites growing up. They still oh, are. So good. And they've done some, uh, they went on hiatus for a long time. Yeah. And they weren't doing anything. And the world was sad. Um, but then they started doing reunion like tours. And they did a lot of it overseas, mm -hmm. like in uh, Turkey and stuff like that. They, they have a lot of like Armenian background yeah. in, within the band. So they, they cater to that crowd a lot. Right. Um, and I watched their, you know, performances on YouTube. And, so, and they have, like, these professional shot, like, high-definition performance videos. And they're great. And I love them. But they're getting old, bruh. They're getting old. Oh, man. By song five or six, you can just tell they're tired. Well, in System of a, <laughs> System of a Down, unfortunately, too, is one of those bands that... I love them. I really do. Oh, They're one great. of my favorite bands, but they just 
they just cannot deliver live performances very well. See, you've said that a few times, and I, I, I disagree. I think they used really? to put on a great show. I think well, Serge was a very good live voice. Sounding good live, though, and putting on a great show, I put in two separate categories. And I'm not even talking about their their newer stuff, like when they come and do shows now and do some of their old stuff now. I'm talking about looking up videos from their heyday. Well, you have and to remember, too, that the video quality was a lot poorer back well, then. Regard, but it was good enough to be able to hear it. I mean, these are these were professional shot videos. This wasn't somebody with a razor cell phone trying to capture. What? Here, here's what I mean I though. Agree, I guess. There, there are some songs with System of a Down too that I think are just much harder to do live. Look at Chop Suey, for example. Right, you have the very beginning that goes, you know, wake up, grab your pillow, all makeup, and then during those periods, what you hear that weird whisper under, right? Yeah. So, he does it live. He gets the whisper in there. He tries, but the... It's in there. Well, you, you can't do it like the album, though, because it overlays with each other. Well, yeah, I so get that. So then he tries to do it really fast. I don't know. I just I just don't think they sound good live. Oh. If, if I listen to you live and your live performance is not either the same or better than your album quality, then I'm going to say you suck live. Because that's what I expect. I think that's unrealistic expectations. Oh, that's I don't. very hard to achieve. I, I think for maybe some artists, maybe artists that have a, a little more of the technical stuff. Well, not even that. Because you have bands like Linkin Park, who I've seen a few times. And they're phenomenal live. And they have a lot they of like electronic live. noises in their songs and a lot of that kind of stuff that they're able to work in there. S System of a Down likes to put their voice through like voice-changing equipment. Yeah. So that's kind of hard to do live. Um, I, I do agree that there's definitely some bands that shine live and some that are not so good. Right. But to, to expect like, like sound booth quality from a live show, it's never well, going to happen. I'm not necessarily asking for sound booth quality, but if I'm listening to your album and you're hitting all the notes on your songs in your album and then live, you're hitting like half the notes. My Chemical Romance is actually another <laughs> one that does that. My Chemical Romance, uh, if I bought like their special edition Black Parade album years ago. So it came with like the DVD showing of one of their concerts or so professionally oh, yeah, yeah. recorded concert. And but the and they like I said, they do a great live show. They're all in costume and they have little things going on in the show that are fun to look at and great show to watch. But there are there were so many notes that Jared Way just was not hitting or just not performing the same as like quality as the albums. So when you look back at like Queen, like mm -hmm. live Queen videos, all, he those were phenomenal, notes, right? Yeah. So I would venture to say that it just takes a good singer. If the singer is actually of high quality and does right. well, then they can do it live. Right. But bands that rely a lot on sound equipment, mm -hmm. which is fine. I'm not saying they're any worse. They're, System of Down is my favorite band right. ever. But they rely more on sound equipment. So it's harder to put on a good show live with that. Right. But having said that, that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy a song off an album just because it's more synthetic. But that's right. what's going to dictate on whether or not I see you live. If I go and want to see System of a Down live, but through their videos and what I've seen, they cannot hit the notes and are just their song quality is not as good as the ones on the album. Although I love System of a Down, I don't see any reason for me to go see them live. The only reason I would be going was just to say that I saw them live. Yeah, I would just. And sometimes that's look reason enough for people. Yeah, but. yeah, it's more of a spectacle. Interesting. Well, I feel more enlightened on that subject. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel as if uh, I know more about you. <laughs> Thank you. As if but, I'm closer to you. Oh my gosh, we're bonding. This is a bonding experience. <laughs> calm, calm down now, Adam. Calm down. <laughs> Oh, did you see that? Uh, did you see the new Aladdin live action trailer? Oh my God. I wanted to talk. So I purposely have not been talking about it until the podcast. Okay. Dude, I'm super excited. Really? I can't fucking wait. Live Aladdin? Mm hmm. So listen, that was thousands of hours of my childhood. Oh, you that was one you watched on repeat a lot? Oh, oh did I love me some Aladdin. Woo! Yes. And. From I saw the trailer. I saw a couple of these trailers. It may have been just one that was put into two different videos. I don't uh -huh. remember. But it looks like they nailed it 
right on the fucking head, dude. It looks exactly like what the cartoon was, Mm -hmm. but just real. I mean, leave it to Disney. Oh, I'm excited for this one. So, one, I had a couple gripes with the with the trailer. Now, mind you, this is coming from somebody where I did I did like Aladdin when I was little, right. but I I wasn't one of the ones watching it on repeat. You know, I was okay. I did that with Lion King and a few other. Oh, I, ones. oh, I definitely watched Lion but, King too. But Aladdin just wasn't one of those for uh-huh. me. And my mom's probably listening to this going, no, Adam, you definitely did. Oh, no, no, you loved you Aladdin. You loved Aladdin. <laughs> but my recollection tells me that was not the case. Okay. <laughs> and, but one thing that honestly really bothered me is at the beginning of the trailer, you got a little shot of Jafar, right? Yeah. And Jafar was telling Aladdin, like, go in there and retrieve the lamp for me. And... I guess it's just because I'm super used to the cartoon because I'm used to go in there and get the lamp for and me. The crazy chin. You know, yeah. yeah. Whereas in this trailer, even though you only heard him talk for a couple seconds, it was go in there and get the lamp for me. And it just, I don't know. I was like, oh, you just don't sound very menacing. You don't sound or look quite menacing enough for me. You think I they mean, got the same voice for Iago? I mean, I don't see why they couldn't. He's There's still only alive. the one guy. He's yeah. the only one who could do it. He's still they prop they had to of. They had to. The only reason why they wouldn't is if the guy I think his name's Gilbert Godfrey is the one who did the voice. That of sounds him. totally correct. Yeah. Gilbert Godfrey. Shout out, bro. Yeah, shout out. But he's the one to do the voice, and the only way I think he wouldn't of is if well, if he disagreed, if he said no, I don't want to do it. But they had to have asked him. It was gonna be a real bird, right? Mm-hmm. Like Panama, just chilling on his shoulder. Yeah, so something. the Hardly Millennial household, we are partial owners of a... Uh, a green... I want to say a green-tailed macaw. It's called like a green-winged macaw, something like that. Something like that. He's a macaw. Yeah. He's not the scarlet. He's a different one. He's a green one. Um, but he's a badass. His name's Panama, mm-hmm. and we own him for half the year, every year. So it's basically going to be like he's going to have Panama on his shoulder, right? Yeah. Well... I, so it's funny you say that. So I remember when I watched the, I would, I did go back and watch the trailer again, and I actually uh-huh. looked at the bird because I was curious. It's a real it bird. The same one. Well, it's a real bird. Okay. I mean, I'm sure there's computer animation for some of the scenes. No but, way. They taught but, a real bird to talk. All the lines. Oh yeah, just all the lines. Yeah. <laughs> they, just, they had Gilbert Godfrey in a studio. <laughs> it said, "Read just all of your parts of the script," and then they stuck the bird in a room, and they just played his played lines it. on repeat until and the, the bird, bird was it. repeating all. Of it. I believe it. I would have done that. <laughs> it's that's, Disney, bro. They that would be money. an annoying fucking bird after that movie's <gasps> over, though. Let me tell you. Oh, that's rude. <laughs> It'd be a real life Iago. That's amazing. It's repeating the same line. He'll get like really into one line and just say the one line over and over again. But anyways, but I did look at the trailer to see if it was the same bird as uh, Panama. Uh huh. And I don't think it is because it no. looked like it looked like it had a black beak. Like a much smaller black beak. You guys missed it, but Adam just did like a hand gesture for the beak. <laughs> it was pretty, he like gave himself a real life beak <laughs> when he said that. It was kind of great. <laughs> just wanted to give you visual. Just wanted to give you a visual, Matthew. But I don't know how that helped with the visual of black. Oh, like, I see it. I totally saw it, bro. But So, well, they got the monkey. I forget the monkeys, the monkeys in name. there. Abu. The Abu. Abu. Oh, how could I forget Abu? So I believe <laughs> in the original Aladdin, because Aladdin was a movie that came out, and I want to say the 60s. And it was a big oh. deal when the movie, obviously a live action, wasn't animated. Oh. And I believe when it came out, though, it was a big deal because at the time it did a lot of like practical effects stuff that if we went back and watched now you'd be like oh that looks like shit obviously it's the 60s <laughs> right but i but <laughs> at the time it was like a big deal and i believe the kid's name the aladdin character's name was abu oh really yeah and aladdin aladdin was a character in there but aladdin was somebody different it's a very different story than what the Disney movie tells, but that's where it's from. Uh, so was there a real Aladdin? Is it based on a true story? I think it was a book. I think it was like a fictitious book. Then in the 60s, they made this live action movie that I think actually followed the book more closely than the Disney huh. version did. And then did it because... If he was my, an actual thief who really murdered. Like Aladdin was a terrible person in well, the book. Well, if <laughs> memory serves me correctly... <laughs> if memory serves me correctly, and I could be very wrong about this, but... Okay. Abu was a dog 
that was turned into a human and then somehow got this genie. I Interesting. I could be remembering it wrong. I just remember watching the movie with my parents. I came in halfway through the movie, and they were trying to explain to me what was happening at this point. Disney but, was like, this is weird. Yeah. We're going to make it a monkey. But it was a big deal at the time because they had things in there like the genie would get really big, right? Well, that was the first time somebody had seen them being able to do this effect where you have this really tall, giant person interacting with this small oh, cool. person. So nobody had seen that in movies before. So it was a big deal for the time. But, but I mean, that, that's a whole tangent though. But yes, the monkey's name is Abu. Abu. They got him in there. And speaking of the genie, Mm -hmm. talk about the star of the whole fucking movie. Will Smith. They got the Smithster. Will Smith. I think that's a good choice. The big W. I think that's a good choice. Oh, hell. It's always a good choice to have Will Smith. I will say though, so look. You only see him for like three seconds in the trailer, right? Uh And usually when they release trailers, it's it's finished enough footage to where they feel good about putting it out, but it's not the final product of the shots that they show. Right. So one thing that I noticed right away with the genie and one thing that really bothered me was Will Smith's movements looked like it was computer animated. Oh, yeah. And I understand. I think his face is the only real thing in it. I think the body is all fake. See, I don't understand why they did that. Well, because Will Smith isn't that ripped. But but still, though, <laughs> they had I to would make him like a Hulk. But still, I would much rather have. But Will Smith is not by any means scrawny. I don't see why well, think, you couldn't. I think we're all getting a little bit older in life. All uh-huh. of us, not not just Will, but right. all of us are just moving along in years, and you know, maybe it's just not quite. What he used to be uh, physically. I mean, maybe you're right. Which is, you know, maybe intellectually he's growing. So physically he's just, you know, we're not, right. not focusing as much in that area of his life. I mean, you may you may very which well is, be. Which is great. Shout out to Will. I love him. Yeah, I love you know? Will Smith too. I think he'll make a good genie. I think he'll be the best genie. Well, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me take that a lot. Let me take that way back. <laughs> I think he'll make a great genie. I don't think he'll be the best genie. No, Robin Williams has that. I think I think that the best genie has already been done. Mm-hmm. See, everybody, oh, there's it's been great. So since the release of that trailer too, <laughs> there's been a lot of complaints where people are like, "Well, Will Smith is no Robin Williams," and it's like, "No, well, no shit, he's no Robin Williams." Right? Like, like when you of lose Heath Ledger, not. you get the next best thing. When you yeah. lose Will or uh, Robin, you get the next best thing. And the thing is, what people need to. What, I, what kills me with all the kind of critiques that come out when these live action trailers are released and everything is everybody is so quick to go, well, it's not going to be like the cartoon. Good. I don't want it to be like the cartoon. We, we already, already have, have that. that. Exactly. I don't need another cartoon. I want a live action with something a little different in there to, to make it more entertaining to watch. I do like that it looks like a lot of the scenes, especially like, so in Aladdin, the cartoon, there's a lot of pull pulled out scenes yeah. where the camera seems to be like up in the sky looking down at the palace yeah. and stuff like that. It looks like the live action one, they did a great job on those. Yes. It's the same kind of looking mountains. It's the they, same kind of structures. With the live actions they've had now, they've always been really good about creating a setting that is similar and nostalgic of the cartoon that they're basing it off of. Right. So I wasn't a particular big fan of the Jungle Book live action movie. But they did a phenomenal job with the setting and the jungle and the characters, making them look like these real animals, but still keeping... It was phenomenal. It was great. That movie was an experience. And that same director who did... did Well, let me go back and say this about Jungle Book again, too. Phenomenal special effects. Dude, it was great. Those animals all being computer animated, I thought they looked fantastic. They looked beautiful, yes. Absolutely beautiful. Now... Having said that, that makes me super excited for the live action Lion King movie coming out. Oh, he worked on the same thing. He's the same director. Oh, dude, same it's director. Be gorgeous. Jo- John Favreau, also the guy who uh, jump started the Marvel universe with the Iron Man movie. Oh, really? He's the one who did that. Yeah. Mm, he's a genius. <laughs> In his own way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy got a raise. That you guy got a did. raise. But <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for the Lion King live action though. So excited for that. Um, I think that that movie is going to be like Titanic was. Like, do you remember how Titanic was like 
the greatest spectacle that had ever been seen by man when it right. came out. Like there was nothing else as epic as that uh-huh. when it came out. I think that's going to be Lion King. You think so? I think people will literally go see The Lion King like four or five times in the theaters. Oh, that's yeah. Those are some big expectations. I know, because because I, I honestly don't think I look. It I was love so the Lion huge King. for everyone's childhood. Yeah, but I just don't think it's gonna hit like that. I say it outdoes Star Wars by a country mile. You think so? I think so. Ooh, those are some... Okay, guys, you heard it here first. You heard it here? I live, think it's going to outdo Star Wars. The live-action Lion King movie is going to outdo Star Wars. Well, John Favreau better do a damn good job with the live-action then. Dude, <coughs> if it's me. anything like what they've shown and anything like what the history shows that he can do, it's going to be an absolute spectacle. I, I really hope so. I just hope we have the... People are going to cry. I wonder how they're going to... One... I'm curious if they're going to make it a musical because so far every live action movie that's come out, there's been some kind of musical aspect in there. I just don't know how easy that's going to be able to do with the these live action hyper realistic animals. I hope that they don't get too musical with it. Mm-hmm. I hope that they just have the musical scenes, right? Like because there are a couple really epic very famous like Lion King songs. Well, of course. You know what I mean? That went down in history. So they I mean, have to portray those. I mean, it'll probably still open with Circle of Life because nobody was actually singing that song, right? Of course it'll be that. And then, so I saw this meme the other day that I thought was really funny. So do you remember the scene in the cartoon where he's singing I Just Can't Wait to Be King, right? Uh-huh. I remember there was the very like finale of the climax of the song and all the animals were piling on top of each other. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Somebody made a meme uh-huh. with that picture and they were they said something along the lines of, I like to see the live action tackle this scene. <laughs> 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 I want to see how they're going to do that. <laughs> Um, I'll be there. I will be there. Um, I think not opening go- day. I don't do that. Uh, I think it's going to be playing in IMAX also. I want to go see it in IMAX. That might be too intense. You think I so? I might have a literal heart attack. Oh, I would Yeah, dude, the stampeding scene, when they're all stampeding all over the little lions. When they released the remastered cartoon version, I saw that in IMAX. It was fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. I loved watching it. I think you should go see the IMAX one. I think the only IMAX movie I ever saw was Cars. Really? Yeah, I saw you cars. You saw cars. I, it was great. Oh, I hate that. Dude, it was fantastic. Okay, let me. I don't hate that movie. I just think of all the Pixar movies, that is their poorest one. Oh, get out of I town! Do. I do. Get out of here! It was I a just, great movie. But I think I'm just not the market for it either. I'm just not into cars. I'm you are sure getting us why. in so much trouble today I'm, with the viewers. I have opinions. Adam, I, I thought I was on one. Adam is apparently on one today. I, I have opinions and I'm going to share them with y'all. But no, the car, but well, Cars 2, <laughs> the sequel to Cars, oh, went that was down garbage. as like one of the, like the worst Pixar movie ever. That was garbage. Yeah. I didn't like it. I'm talking about the first one. The first one was great. Did you see the third one? I didn't even know there was a third one. Oh, they, they did tried a third again. one. Yeah. I think it did well. I think box office wise, it did well. Nobody's calling it shit like they did the second one. You know, I don't love trilogies in general. Yeah. Trilogies tend to... I feel that they're, it gets to a point where they're just keeping it going to get to the third one. Like, right. They're really done with the story. Well, what I don't appreciate about trilogies, because this is how a lot of trilogies are born, right? So you have the first movie, and everybody makes the first movie like, okay, well, let's let's leave, let's leave, end the first movie with, like, it could continue on, but if it also did bad and we can't make any more movies, it can also be a standalone, right? Sure. And then what they do is they're like, oh, the movie did really well. Let's come out with the sequel. And then the sequel is usually this to-be-continued bullshit ending because well, so like, we can get a, two out of it because we know we can get yeah. a third one. like Pirates of the Caribbean did that there's a few other well, movies that did that so some of them are actually really good like like what's a good example I don't know was Narnia a trilogy no, like Narn- the books the books were really good in that like the sometimes were, the books were in trilogies though there was like I think five books five. well some stories them. do take longer to be told so you and know, I get that so you know what I think was a good I'm going to say original trilogy because this is one of those franchises where years later they started making sequels but was the original Alien trilogy the Alien Aliens and Alien 3 
Yeah, those I, were all pretty solid. I really enjoyed that trilogy because every movie was a separate story. You didn't really need to see the movie before to know. I mean, you like, you needed to know to know who Sigourney Weaver was a little bit. But you can but, watch any one of them and be but yeah. Everything has its own separate field. And here's the cool thing about that trilogy also. All of those movies were directed by famous directors now who were not famous when they did those movies. Oh, how funny. So the first one, the the creation of the Alien and the Alien universe was Ridley Scott. That was his first movie, period. Really? He did Gladiator now. Oh my God, and, I love that movie. Yeah, he's done a lot of movies now. And a lot of Academy Award winning movies. So that was Ridley Scott. Aliens, the second one, was James Cameron. Oh. And that was before he was that we was even before him. Terminator. Really? So that was his whole thing. And then the third one was David Fincher's first movie, who's the one who did Fight Club, Panic Room, oh, Fight Gone Club. Girl. Yeah. We don't talk about Fight Club. That's yeah. the first rule. That's Adam. the first you rule about that. Fight Club, you're right. I just broke it. Half our viewers <laughs> are not gonna get that one. Nope. Be like, what is that? <laughs> Go back and watch that movie. It's a good oh, one. Dude, it's great. But that's what made that trilogy so cool. I, even now thinking back. And now and then they came out with the fourth one that was shit. And they, they have some newer ones now that are okay, but what about like Lord of the Rings? Wasn't that a trilogy? Yes, that was Peter Jackson. Lord of the Rings was fucking that was fantastic. Great. Did you ever see the Hobbit trilogy that came out? <sighs> yes. I heard it was shit. So people people were just telling me it shouldn't have been three movies. Is really well, what it was. It shouldn't have been three movies. The thing is, it's not shit. It's just not action. Gotcha. Is the thing. So you get so into the epic, huge fight scenes from Lord of the Rings, right? Right. Because they make it a point to like animate the scenes so they're gigantic, right? Right. Well, there's like none of that in The Hobbit. The Hobbit's literally a dude going on a quest. Right. <sighs> And, like, the quest is more mentally challenging than physically challenging. Gotcha. So just not a lot to actually watch. Fantastic story. Right. Like, the book has really good writing in it. It's great. But I literally fell asleep a couple times while reading it. Like, it just gets super boring. Yeah. I've I've heard... I remember when I was younger, I watched the... Car, they, remember they had the cartoon Lord of the Rings and the cartoon Hobbit movie? I do not remember they that. Get, oh, I really? Oh, they had... The, we watched them in school one time, and I think it was in, like, fifth or fourth grade, something like that. But we watched The Hobbit, and I remember watching The Hobbit cartoon. And remember, this is a cartoon they made for kids, <laughs> and just being, this is so boring. Like, there was <laughs> nothing happening. Yeah, that's pretty much The Hobbit, dude. There was this whole whole scene when he meets Gollum for the first time and Gollum you know and he gets the ring from Gollum oh in the little cave yeah the little the cave, cave and yeah. the, that entire scene in the cartoon was just this long thing of them just talking to each other and I'm just like oh my gosh well that's what it is in the book you ever read the book no I haven't read the book same thing just a long drawn out conversation yeah see well it's, it's a book thing no, they can it. do a movie there's like a tree that almost kills him at one point so he has to like cut the tree down yes and there's like yeah that's it see I like the I like the Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy movie that Peter Jackson did. But even when those movies came out, I was asking people and myself, why didn't he just start with The Hobbit? If he knew he That's was... why. If he knew he already had the funding for three movies... <laughs> because The Hobbit's boring. Yeah. It's like Star Wars. That's mm -hmm. why they started with four, five, six. Because they were like, no one's ever going to want to fucking see one, two, three. That mm -hmm. shit's boring. Let's get to the fight scenes. Yeah. So and then you, it was so popular. They're like, let's make the first three. So you know about that story then where George Lucas had written like a like it was this long form script of all the Star yeah. Wars movies. And then he went back and was like, oh, we can make this part. Yeah. He was yeah. like, the first part is boring as fuck. Nobody's going to ever go see that. Let's just cut right to the action. Well, I wasn't even, I don't even think it was that it was boring. It was he had limited funding. So he was trying to see, okay, with the funding I have, what part of my script yeah. can I make? Yeah. And I could be wrong on that. I just know that's something that I've well, heard it, rumored. For I mean, a it long ended up time. working out for him. <sighs> My own. It looked pretty damn good. Sold it to Disney for billions. <laughs> billions. Like, we want that. We want that. There was a whole entire history of LucasArts before Disney, they mm -hmm. were like a powerhouse before Disney. Yeah. Indiana Jones was under the uh, the Lucas LTD name. Really? And, oh yeah, that's George I love Lucas's Indiana Jones. baby, or not baby? I would say Star Wars is his baby, but he's he came up with the story for Indiana Jones, and Spielberg came in and directed them. Uh, that's all George Lucas is doing. That's his idea. Really? Yeah. I love Indiana Jones. I did too. Um, Except my for mom, the second one. My mom loved it growing up, and we watched it a lot over and over and over. 
I actually like all of them. Even the even the fourth one, the Crystal Skull one, I even enjoyed that one. I did not like I the second it. one though. The Temple of Doom. With a my god, god and the how could you not the love heart. the Temple of Doom? That is oh. the quintessential Indiana Jones. Well, yeah, of, well, yeah, there are a lot of iconic scenes that came out of it, but it was just super hokey, just way too hokey for me. Yeah, well, it's old. Well, the first and third one weren't hokey. The fourth one was a little hokey, but the first and third one the fourth, weren't didn't nearly have Shia as. In it. Yeah, that was they the threw, Shia they threw the buff ones. in there. They threw the buff in there. He, is a fantastic actor, by the way. Oh, he I is. really like him. If only he was just a little more sane in real life. Oh yeah, for sure. So he would, but he probably wouldn't be a good actor unless he wasn't a little. Dude, that Woo-hoo. guy is so he gets into his roles. He does. Holy shit. I do enjoy him a lot. There's Remember Holes? Oh, I, I read that holes. book. I read that book over and over. I did too. It's I great. loved that book. Then when they came out with the movie, I thought it was one of the best rend- movie renditions of a book that it I was had very seen. well done. Speaking of holes, um, we were actually talking about this earlier. So the third millennial, Justin, is having a kick right now, guys, where um, oh. he is, he became a gardener. He's digging a lot of holes. Um, so he calls it a farmer. He wants to be a farmer. But he's gardening, is what he's doing. For now. For now. So he's turned our backyard into just a death trap. <laughs> Every two I literally feet, keep falling into holes. <laughs> Every two feet, there's just a three foot deep hole. And they're all over. And we have uh, tortoises. And the poor tortoises, they go outside to get the sun. And... Every, you know, hour or so, me and Adam find our way out there to smoke a cigarette or just enjoy the daylight. And we have to do a search each time to try to find the tortoises. Just to make sure. Because they'll fall on their backs and then they get stuck. And It's really, it's sad, but it's kind of funny too. I mean, we're happy to do it because we do believe in the vision, but. Oh yeah, Justin, we know you're listening and yeah. we believe. We do. We do believe and love you. We just think it's funny. That's it's, all. You know. Someone may break a leg. It's possible. I do keep tripping in them, though. I'll just be walking around, <laughs> and then I'll just get stuck in my thoughts, and then before you know it, I'm in a hole. I literally watched you walk straight into one yesterday. Yes. I was like, are you serious? Yes. That happens to me quite often. <laughs> <laughs> it was It was great. Oh, my word. But, yeah. Gosh, we talked a lot about movies. Well, it was... It's a big part of our lives right now. I'm excited yeah, about sure. Aladdin. What what the other? Oh, that's right. So this morning, mm-hmm. I read an interesting article. I didn't see how, how old the article was or anything, but it was about this guy who came up with these five millennial commandments. Oh, how suiting yes. for our... For our entertainment S- channel exactly so i felt i had to share these and <laughs> they're actual commandments they're actual commandments oh, that's great. like they're written as commandments and everything oh lay them on me so the the five millennial commandments <laughs> and i believe the article said something like because 10 was just too long for millennials <laughs> and again, the first one is covet thy or thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wi-fi <laughs> Two is okay. like, thy shall let the phone eat first. So they're referring to taking pictures of your food. Oh, before, before you, you eat it. Them. Yeah. Okay. We do that a lot. Uh, <laughs> three is like, th- thou shall have, thou shall pair avocado toast with craft beer. Avocado toast with, with craft, craft beer. beer. I've never done that, but I like both those things. I like both those things too. That sounds yep, delicious. I've, uh, never, never jumped on that train. Uh, <laughs> only post selfies with filters. Only post selfies with filters. Don't ever post a selfie just with nothing. Oh God forbid! A and then picture. I mean, fuck, we don't ever post pictures without filters. No. Never. And then five, only listen to music on vinyl. On vinyl? That's one thing I never do. I I do that actually. You do that? Yeah. Do you, you find is there a right quality difference? I have vinyls and stuff. I I there are certain songs. So I'm not so, you can ask a lot of hipsters and such of like, "Oh, why do you listen to music on vinyl?" and they'll say, "Oh, well, it sounds better on vinyl." I have I, a hard time with that. I don't believe that. I don't believe it either. I don't believe it. However, there's just kind of an atmosphere that I think playing something on vinyl get 
I think atmosphere is the wrong word, but just I almost think it's correct. I could, think yeah. I think it does. Like an atmosphere it creates when you're playing something on vinyl. Yeah. Because I don't I don't buy just any band that I like on vinyl. Like I would never listen to like System of a Down on vinyl, for example, right? Okay. But I'll listen to I like a lot of like kind of folk rocky stuff. So like the Lumineers, Mumford and Sons of Monsters and Men. So okay. those are the things I'll buy on vinyl. So certain genres are kind of better on the Yeah. It just like kinda, coffee shop music. Yes, exactly. It's like people you. who like enjoy writing at a coffee shop rather than writing from home. There are just certain bands I'd rather listen on vinyl for the experience than listen to I on always, like an iPod. I always figured it was still around as like a nostalgic thing. Well, I think part of it's nostalgic. I think part of it's kind of a collector's thing, too. Because there's a lot of new artists who will still, when they come out with an album, they'll still release a vinyl <laughs> does, with this. Does, like, Ariana Grande, does, does she yeah. put out, like, a vinyl? Yeah. Really? They no all kidding. do it. If usually you Tay-Tay, can't, Tay, usually, Taylor Swift is putting vinyls out? Yeah. Usually no if shit. you go to places like Barnes & Noble <laughs> or, like, Hot Topic, Spencer's, places like that, <laughs> some of them will actually have a little section in the store that will have, like, new vinyls and stuff that are that have come out. No kidding. Yes. So there's some kid out there who, like, that's their thing. They're collecting yeah. those. And I think a lot of it, yeah, I think a lot of it is just kind of a collector's thing. Interesting. Because a lot of the times they'll do something that's, like, fun with it. Like, I have a a, a, a of Monsters and Men album vinyl. Right. And the whole vinyl's pink. So it's just, just oh, like, cute. little, yeah, so just little fun things like that I think people do. You can is, put designs on the vinyls. Is vinyl just, pla- is it just plastic? No, it's vinyl. What is like vinyl is vinyl. It's its own. It's its own thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Does it come out of the ground? I don't know actually. Interesting. But I'm pretty we sure we should be a lot more prepared for these. We should. But, <laughs> but this is see what happens, folks, is we talk about things, realize we don't know anything about it, <laughs> and then afterwards we'll do the research on it so that we are now knowledgeable in it. But you but guys when, never know. But when you hear it, it just sounds like we're yeah. dumbasses. We, we never do any follow up to show you <laughs> nope. that we've educated ourselves. So maybe so just keep listening. And you'll just hear us naturally get smarter as we learn more about these things. Naturally get smarter but always a moment too late always a moment too late <laughs> that's just, us just like a millennial that's adam and matthew <laughs> jesus but yeah but anyways but there are some things i do like to listen to a vital so, but let, let me see these commandments these are interesting yeah so thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wi-fi mm-hmm. that means like don't steal your your neighbor's wi-fi no, it's just a bad move it's a dick move it's isn't a dick it? move it really is you're just slowing down the bandwidth yeah just don't do that at Just first, it was it. like, at first, it's funny, too, because I remember growing up and people who would do that, they're like, oh, I just use my neighbor's Wi-Fi, whatever. And now it's become like that thing where it's like, no, you just don't do that. Just, well, that's because you've grown up to be the neighbor who pays for Wi-Fi. Yep. So you're the guy everyone's using now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is funny because it's kind of gone the other way now where like things like streaming services like Netflix and Hulu and Crunchyroll, like there'll be usually one person that pays for it. They might live in another state, but oh, they'll yeah. let four people use it, you know. At, They're at just the point, person that pays for Netflix. At one point, I was literally paying a monthly subscription to Netflix and I didn't own a TV or a phone. Mm-hmm. I was literally paying it, and four other people who I didn't even have contact with anymore were using it. Really? And I felt somewhat obliged to keep paying for it because I didn't want to, like, change these people's lives. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it was I my duty that. at that yeah, point like to just at this pay the point, $8. They've grown accustomed to a certain lifestyle. And then I think they changed it from 8 to, like, $11. Mm-hmm. And I got an email that was like, are you cool with this or do you want us to fuck off? And I was like, no, nah, fuck off. <laughs> and it canceled it. All of a sudden you're getting calls from people you haven't spoken to in three years. Matthew, what the hell? What the hell, man? <laughs> no, I just never heard from them. I assume that they got their own. That's kind of what, that's kind of what happens in these uh, households. Like, I know like uh, my brother pays for the Netflix that we use. Justin pays for the Hulu that we use. And although I don't, uh, and although nobody in this house aside for me and other people use it, I pay for a Crunchyroll that I think three other what people is that? use. So Crunchyroll is like yummy. Netflix of anime. Oh. Yeah. So okay. it's a streaming service for anime. Okay. But You'd be surprised. I bet a lot of our viewers know about this. Oh, it's super popular. Anime is really big right now, man. Anime is, so 
somebody was telling me the other day that one of these K-pop bands, like J-pop, K-pop bands, uh, like Korean pop, Korean pop is yeah. what the yeah the K and then J is Japanese, of course. And those bands, those groups, are getting really popular. And for those of you out there who don't know, you should you guys should look it up. It's it's pretty funny, and some of the songs are really catchy. But there are these Korean pop and Japanese pop groups. I'm not going to call them bands, but they're groups. And they're usually like all boy groups or all girl groups. And they will have these specific fan bases where everybody knows like the names, like all the like, it'll be like 10 boys, right? And all right. 10 boys will like gain a personality. So girls will have their favorite oh, wow. one. It's like boy, how boy bands were here in the so 90s. In America, we'd split that into two bands. Yes. That's way too many people <laughs> for a band. But it's just like how in the 90s, you know, everybody had their favorite Backstreet Boy or favorite oh, NC hell yeah. person. Yeah. Nick Carter. Yeah, exactly. He was my favorite. <laughs> I love that guy. So everybody had their, so it's the same thing with like J-pop and K-pop. But what's unique about it is it's starting to come over to Western culture more and more and more as the niche fan base that's here already starts to break out and get older. So somebody was telling me the other day that one of these K-pop artists actually performed at the Grammys. Oh, no kidding. And one prediction that I made years ago when I was younger was that at some point, I think anime is going to become very mainstream here. I agree. I, I would think, agree with that. I think it's. I think right now it is still a niche. You know, it's still a it's niche thing. It's almost mainstream, though. It's getting it's, bigger. Like in Japan, for example, they have billboards where they're advertising cell phone companies and brands, and they're using anime characters to do it. Well, and just look at the movies nowadays. The newest movies coming out, mm -hmm. they have a lot to do with a lot of the um, – anime art styles like yes. our animation now is starting to get we think that like really big eyes are very cute you know yes. small faces with the larger eyes kind mm -hmm. of i always use the word like fox features or mousy features yeah, you know bigger fair. ears bigger eyes smaller face we're starting to think that's really cute yeah and, which i mean it is i love it mm -hmm. and you're starting to see that more in the animation we just watched that one where the kid was looking for the keys inside the game. Oh, Ready Player One. Ready Player One. Yes. That had a lot of anime art styles yes. in the characters, but it wasn't an anime movie. No. And then this new one that we just looked at. Alita Battle Angel. Alita. And that, that one's is actually, an anime. That one's actually based off of a manga, which and manga is anime comic book. So that's what animes are so before they become animes. Okay. Yeah. So but it's a it's more westernized. Yes. Like it's a western take on it. Well, and I think that's how it's going to get popular over here. So what the problem has been so far is Look, and speaking as somebody who's a big fan of anime, I've also dealt with the stigma for many years that anime is for kids, it's just cartoons, or it's just stupid, or whatever people yeah. say. Also, it's when cheesy. people... Cheesy. and when people think of anime, too, they automatically think of just, like, the the big-breasted bill bimbos that are on there. Either like, that or Dragon Ball Z. Or Dragon Ball like Z. Like, over, right. overdone fighting scenes. Or over-sexual innuendos. But, uh, which, I mean, it kind of is. Well, but that's the difference, though. <laughs> Some of them are. It is literally a genre. Oh, really? It is a... Those so are those are the first ones to get popular here. Exactly. And there are still people out there who enjoy that genre. And I've even yeah. watched a few animes within that genre. But what I always tell people is animes are like books. They're like movies. There is one out there for everybody. Oh, but yeah. But nobody takes the time to go and like watch them. But there are some crazy sweet stories. Like I've teared up in it. I mean, I tear up easily. But I mean, there have been stories that have been so beautiful and beautifully told by the – and some of them aren't even like fantasy or anything. They're just like – regular like yeah. movies Normal, but they're just but they're done, done in, in that anime. style yeah and just these beautiful stories and i'm just like if they made this if this was a movie over here and a big director made this uh a, a live action instead of an anime i guarantee it'd be super popular but because it's an anime nobody will give it the time of day well and like that's me mm -hmm. i'm a huge perpetrator of that like yeah. and a lot of people so are. i always say that i'm not really into anime but the thing is, every time I've watched one, I like it. Mm -hmm. So, like, obviously Dragon Ball Z was the first interaction I had right. with something like that. Loved it. Ended up watching all of it. Right. right? Then, um, oh, what was another? Like, Naruto. Yeah. You know, that's more, a little bit more cartoony, but all still has some of that. And I always thought, oh, so dumb. Watched it. Loved it. Right. Um, there was uh, Avatar. 
right? Oh, yeah. Still, again, that's very actually, cartoony. And that's actually a unique one because that's a westernized anime. That didn't start in Japan or Korea. I thought it was super cool. Mm-hmm. That was a great super one. Super cool. Uh, the most recent one that I gave a chance was Soul Eater. Oh, yeah. Soul Eater's uh, great. Dude, you it's basically a cartoon, guys. Like, you don't even... If you didn't tell someone it was an anime... They'll figure it out, but it's gonna take them a minute. Anime, it's literally anime just a cartoon. All, really, just refers to the style of animation. That's really what anime refers to. It, it looks like something that could have been on Cartoon Network sure. when we were kids, like Absolutely. a Samurai Jack kind of thing. Sure, yeah. You know what I mean? See that with that one particularly. Oh, I really enjoy that story. Yeah, it is fast paced. It's interesting. The characters are badass, dude. There are so there's this one that I grew up that my brother and I really enjoy. And it's easily one of my favorite animes ever. And it's called Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I've heard that name. And I so I own it. We'll have to watch it one time. I've heard but that. But what's really cool about it is not only is there this really intricate story and bond and relationship that you're following between these two brothers, but it's all taking place during a time when there's like military because they live in a country that's uh What's it called when the country's run by the military? Uh, martial law. So uh, that's run under martial law. So the military runs everything. And so it's all about, so even though you're watching this like relationship between this brother happen and that's the main linear storyline, there's right. like a coup within the government that's starting to happen and like oh. all these conspiracies and this person trying to do this while this person over here is trying to do this. It reminds me of The Last of Us. Like with the fireflies yeah. oh, and yeah. the government and the military and Much stuff. more intricate than that, though, because this is like 150 episodes of this. Oh, interesting. Right? Yeah, it's, we'll have to check that it's, out. That yeah, we'll cool. have to watch it one time. It's super good. But going back to what I think is going to make anime become really mainstream here is an issue that we've had through the years is there have been directors and filmmakers who have tried creating live action anime films. Dragon Ball Z in particular yes. is the one that's been yes. done a lot. But the problem is... There's, there is such a look and feel and a way that animes are done that nobody has quite been able to do su- uh, sufficient live action versions of it yet without changing the story. So, fun fact, The Matrix is based off of an anime. Really? The Wachowski brothers, well, they were the brothers back then, are... The, they're a huge anime D- friend. Different story, though, huh? They had to change it to make it a movie. Exactly. Yeah. So The Matrix is based off of an anime movie that was really popular in the 90s called Ghost in the Shell. Oh. And they actually made recently a live action version of Ghost in the Shell with uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh. But The Matrix was originally based off that. And there was actually a YouTube video I saw where they put. Uh, scenes side by side from the Matrix and Ghost in the Shell, and they're basically the same scene. No kidding. Yeah. So what I but the but obviously it wasn't called Ghost in the Shell. It wasn't marketed as based off of an anime. It was just marketed as its own movie. I thought it was just a really ingenious guy who had a great story. And and a lot of it was, you know, because there are a lot of differences between that and Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. But it was based from Ghost. But still, in the they Shell. could slow down the time. They were in a computer program. Exactly. Guns, All of that. that. Whole thing. Yeah. Interesting. And so what I think is going to happen is once we get to this point where we're able to make these really good award-winning movies that are live actions of from animes, it's going to make the people who are really who get really into these live action movies and then they're going to hear, "Oh, this is based off of a manga. This is based off of an anime. What? I really like this. I want to go check out that." It's like people who watch a movie and then want to go read the book, right? What if it becomes a whole different industry? Like Hollywood doesn't take it over. It becomes like a new thing. Like South End is the is the, is where the new that's where all the animated movies come from. Well, the, I think the, I think it will cuz that's what you see in Japan right now. Is, well, and in India, they have like Bollywood well, the, exactly. and they do more musical so stuff there. So, if you watch a lot of anime like I do, you see the same kind you see the same company names coming up in different episodes. So I think Anaplex is one of them, Funimation's another one, Funimation is Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Uh, so there's a few So there's a couple But there's companies. like 3 or 4 that you see the most right. come out of these anime. So it's so you'll have that same kind of thing. There'll be like one big anime studio that comes out here that makes animes in America. That's the difference uh, right now. We We've, don't have the studio yet. Well, and that's the difference too. We've had a few like Avatar, for example, was an American-made anime, right. but that's really it, though. There's a few other ones that we're talking right? about. The Last Airbender, too. The by Last the way. Airbender, not the yes. Blue People. Yeah, sorry, not that one. Probably wise to make that distinction, right? But <laughs> all uh, otherwise, all of the popular <laughs> animes that come over here 
are all dubbed over in English. The original is Japanese. So there's no like American market for anime yet. We're consumers of it, but we're not creators of it. Well, and I think there are some entities that are trying to become creators of it. Possibly, oh. yeah. But it has to it but anime itself has to gain more popularity first within mainstream media in order for more people to start making American made anime. And I right. think these live actions are how you're going to get to that point. Well, unfortunately, there has to be money in it for people right. to invest and create And I think that. there is. There I, oh, there is. I think nobody's just monetized on it yet not quite the way that they should at least we're trying to make live actions people should be trying to make their own animes hey may maybe it'll be the hardly millennials guys maybe it will you never know you never know the hardly studios <laughs> hardly, <laughs> hardly, hardly anime is what we'll call it it's like kind of anime but not quite anime well that's that's many moons from now. Many Maybe we'll moons. Get there. Many moons. There's a small little update for you. <laughs> here's here's the twenty year plan. <laughs> well, guys, we are quickly quickly running out of time. Is it reached that today. time? It has, Adam. It comes fast. It comes fast. This happens every day. It really does. All right. Well, I mean, I guess we'll say our goodbyes. Uh, remember, everybody, we are on Instagram. We are on Twitter. We have a Facebook fan page. Our name is pretty unique, so you really just have to type in our name, and you'll you'll find us on there. Our logo is pasted on everything. Um, again, I'll remind you guys that you can listen to this on SoundCloud. So if you know somebody who wants to listen to it but maybe – can't do the YouTube thing for whatever reason. They can always listen to it on SoundCloud. It's a free app. You can listen to it. And also we have our GoFundMe still going, www.gofund.go www.gofundme.com forward slash hardly millennial. You, you can go. find it there. There we go. Got Nailed that out. It. And yeah, so just put some money in the jar if you're able to. Everything helps. Again, none of the money goes to Matthew or I. It all goes straight back into Hardly Millennial. Any final thoughts for you, Matthew? Um, you know, guys, just thank you for staying with us through this journey, giving us this opportunity. And the number one most helpful thing you can do for us is share it with your friends, guys. Share, like, subscribe, Give comment. them a chance to love us as well. Yeah. And guys, it's... Look, it's very easy to subscribe. And if you don't want the notifications from us, you just don't hit the just, bell. Just turn them off. Just turn them off. They turn yeah, them off. But it's that easy. subscribe button helps us in more ways than you can imagine. It's huge. Yeah. But we're, right, we're, we're done begging. Uh <laughs> <laughs> until next time. We love you. We love we'll miss you, you till then. Have a lovely day, everybody. Bye-bye.